All right, our final lesson of the whole series is uh, of a new feature called Data Safe. Also, we call it Data Protection. No, Data Protection, the feature itself is called Data Safe. This is another new feature that comes with our advanced WAF. And there are aspects of this feature that I think are some of the best security that we have available. And I find it very, very exciting. Um, this feature is all about malware and the threat of malware and credential theft. That's what malware does. It can steal data and use. Here's what we're talking about, data and use. So a hacker is going to try to get malware on their computer. Now, if you really want to get more information about how malware is created and how, how this happens, I encourage you to look into some of the uh, WebSafe fraud presentations that are available or class that's available, because that's all covered in those uh, lessons there. But the malware gets on a user's, on a victim's computer. The victim accesses any application, like their banking site, and then they're going to uh, log in. Now, as soon as they access the site there, you saw it was flashing, that sort of triggers the malware. The malware is triggered because of the site they went to. This malware is probably listening for any banking site this user might go to and any other number of financial type of companies that they might go to. So now the user is gonna, they've gotta fill in that information. This is data in use. I'm filling this information in the form. And then I'm gonna click on that button, sign in. Now I'm looking right now at the inspection tools in Chrome. And I just wanna point out that if you look at the inspection tools in Chrome, you'll see that for each of these fields, I can view the data, including this password style field that I'm not supposed to be seeing. I can see it in clear text. Now, I wanna also be clear that at this point, anything I can see here could be stolen by the malware. So the user clicks on sign in, that's gonna send their username and password to the server. It's encrypted, that's all great. And at this point, nothing really changes between the user and their banking site. They're gonna get their next page, they'll do whatever they want on their banking site. However, in addition, malware is now going to send that stolen data in use to a, what's called a drop zone. And what malware typically targets is usernames, passwords, account number fields, credit card number fields, any of the kind of data that is gonna be very valuable to sell to the highest bidder. Especially knowing that all this data is in clear text. Even if this communication is HTTPS. So that's how malware does this. And this is really what we are uh, protecting. This is what DataSafe is addressing, is these lost credentials. And again, so this is an advanced WAF feature. Advanced WAF and DataSafe uh, provide a few different options. Keyboard logging, keyboard logging programs that are designed to track everything we type. Identifying stolen credentials. Protecting those input fields that we just talked about, those data in use input fields. Uh, doing what's called real-time encryption. We'll look at what that is in just a few moments. And then one of my favorite features, dynamically obfuscating form fields. These are really some of the key features for advanced WAF's data set. All right, so let's take a look this is a, a, a web page. We all, we've seen our DBWA page many, many times. I have just logged in and I'm using my inspection tools right now. So after I've logged in, I'm gonna go and take a look at my logon page. 
And this is going to show me everything that happened on the logon page, including inside of a form. And I can see the three fields that were on that logon page, the username, the password, and the login field. And I can see the data. This, again, is what malware can steal. So this is without having data safe applied. This is what it will look like with data safe applied. So at this point, after I have submitted my username and password, we have what is called uh, application layer encryption that will encrypt things like the password field so that only advanced WAF can decrypt it. And this is done at the application layer, not layer six or layer five. So malware at this point will get this. This is what malware, where, uh, this is what malware will receive. Uh, and this is what the hacker will get. In fact, I can, I can add this data safe feature to any of my form fields. My username is still visible. How about if we encrypt that as well? So now, even if my victim has malware and they have lost their credentials, they're still protected. So we're not going to actually lose uh, the actual real credentials to the hacker. There's also this keyboard logging uh, that we talked about. So this is kind of what a keyboard logging program looks like. I'm logging into my web page and a log file is tracking everything that I am doing. Every keyboard key, including the tab key and the enter key. And so if the malware program is able to do this keyboard logging, and as the hacker, I have access to this, I'm gonna be able, even though I don't know, it doesn't say here which was my username, which is my password, I could probably guess from here information that I need to know to gather the password. So that's without that protection. With the protection that we have with DataSafe, what's gonna happen is, once the user has typed their username, by the way, what you're gonna see here only applies to password style fields. Password style fields, the ones that, where you type them, that doesn't show you the characters. As soon as I start typing the password, what DataSafe does is it just floods a keylog file with gibberish characters. And it continues to do that until the user tabs out or moves on. And so the keylog, it doesn't stop the keylog file from working. All it does is it makes sure that when the hacker gets access to this keylog file, they're going to now look at it. And by the way, of course, my actual password won't be in red. I'm just showing you that those characters are indeed somewhere inside of there. They're going to look at this and they're going to have no idea what my actual password is. So that's another feature that we have with DataSafe. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of malware out there. Some malware captures passwords as soon as, right as you're clicking on the go button or the submit button. That's when it captures them. Some malware actually captures passwords as they are typed. It looks kind of like this. So the malware is running and the user is going to begin to uh, start filling in their password. So at this point, the malware is capturing every single character as they are typing it. Now, we have already applied that application encryption to this password. So as soon as I click on go, this is what's sent to the drop zone. That's no good to the hacker. They can't do anything with that. So that's great. But the malware also captured that. And now that is also sent to the drop zone. And so now the hacker, of course, has some of our information. So what we need to do is add even more protection. And DataSafe offers what is called real-time encryption. And I just want to show you what a page looks like, uh, the backside of a page, what it looks like. You've seen this before if you've gone to a view source. 
And if I start typing here, my password, nothing changes here because nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen until I click on go. And that's what enables the, uh, the malware to do what it does, capturing my passwords as I type them. Well, we can fix that with real-time encryption. Let's take a look at that same page as I start typing the password. As I start typing the password, encryption begins in real time, and as I keep typing my password, it continues to re-encrypt the password as I'm typing it. So even if malware is capturing this as I type it, it's still getting encrypted data. So that's an additional feature of DataSafe. Now, let's talk real briefly, real briefly about how hackers create malware. How they create malware. The only way they can do something by capturing this username and this password is by knowing my username and my password fields. They have to know uh, to capture whatever is in the field called username and capture whatever is in the field called password. So just being able to go and look at any website, I could go to my Bank of America site right now, do a view source, and I could see all the field names. I can see the whole form. I can see, when you can see everything from the form, from the start to the end of the form, that enables the hacker to create malware to target that form and do whatever they want on that form. So this is not good. We have a feature called field obfuscation, obfuscation. So that's without, this is with. With field obfuscation, my, new, my two field names now are gonna look like that. What is that? That's an obfuscated value of username and that's an obfuscated value of password, whatever those field names are. And not only does it obfuscate them, but those obfuscated values change every second. So when the hacker is now trying to create a malware that's going to target our web page, they don't know how to create their malware to target these fields because the field names constantly change. But there is still a little bit of visibility. Even though they've got these field names, they're obfuscated, we still have a form that's easy to manipulate with malware. They can, a hacker can create malware that inserts new stuff here and new fields. They can totally manipulate this because they can see the whole makeup of our form. So this is without a feature we have called decoy inputs. With a feature we have called decoy inputs, my form is suddenly going to look like this to the hacker. If they go to do a view source, it's going to look like this. And every second, it's just going to add and remove fields with different names. And the, uh, the uh, end result here is a hacker that's trying to target my logon page to create malware. They don't even know where to begin. They don't understand our page and it keeps changing. And so they're going to eventually just give up on our logon page and they'll move to another target's logon page. So all of these features together are all part of a data safe. And, um, oh, and by the way, you notice if we log on now, remember I did this earlier, when I log on now, remember earlier I just had three field names Look at all the fields I have now. These, are all, these all look like fields in our form, but those are all just decoy input fields. Again, the hacker can't do anything with that. So all of those features we just talked about are all configured with our feature data safe. So again, this is found under our data protection. Then we've got our data safe profiles. Uh, and this is actually very easy to set up. 
it's a separate from your ASM security policy. I want to make that first off very clear. This is not part of your ASM security policy, and this is not part of your layer seven denial service policy. This is another profile that we're creating, our data safe profile. So you just give the profile a name, and then we come over and create a URL. What we're going to do is we're just going to protect one or more URLs. More than likely, usually, all we're going to worry about when I create a URL are things like my logon page. So right now this says lorax.php. That's a typo that should say login.php. And I will fix that in my materials for all of you. Um, because that's where my fields are. I only need to apply a data safe profile and add URLs that have forms and fields that we want to protect. We want to add encryption on and so forth. So once I've got my URL, I will now go to my application layer encryption and take a look at all these features. These are all the features we were talking about. Uh, stolen credentials and key logging protection. Notice that most of these are enabled by default. If I scroll down a little bit, we've got decoy inputs and field obfuscation and so forth. That's really all we need to do unless I want to enable decoy inputs, which I think we should, because I think that's a great feature. So this is the first step. We have to set up the URL. And like many things in ASM, we also need to identify the parameters in question. So in order to protect certain fields, in order to encrypt those fields, I need to identify those fields. So we have to add some parameters. So we're gonna go back up here. So there's my application layer encryption. Now I've got my parameters here. And I'm just gonna add the different parameters that we wanna protect. Things like my username field, my password field. You can protect any of the parameters on any of your pages. And the, uh, the three things, the three key things that we can do is we can encrypt, we can do substitute value, and we can do obfuscate. Encrypt, what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that after the user submits their form and it sends it, if the, ha if the malware grabs it, it's going to get an encrypted value of whatever the user entered in. Obfuscate is what's going to change that name of the field if we do a view source and we look at the, the field name and it's going to give it that strange obfuscated name and it's going to change every second. All I need to do now is just create that. Go to my virtual server in question. Go to my security page, my properties page where we have our application security policy enabled, our DOS profile enabled, and now we can enable our anti-fraud profile. And this is where I'll now select my data safe. And that's all there is to this feature. It's actually, a, unlike, uh, you know, set up a security policy, very easy to set up. Uh, so. Why don't you go ahead, get into this. Um, you're gonna go in and play with this. You're gonna add application layer encryption. You're gonna add real-time encryption, key logging protection. And then my favorite feature, you're gonna do the field obfuscation and adding decoy inputs uh, and see how easy this feature is to work. All right, thank you very much.